consistent with my vision and my assignment. And while it is true that I want to activate streams of income, it will not be at the detriment of my assignment. And so you must structure your life in such a manner that you can activate multiple streams of income and then at the same time conserve your time as much as possible. Praise the Lord. Write this down. There is a, an equation for financial freedom. Financial freedom is equal to financial abundance plus time plus peace of mind. That you have money does not mean you are financially free. Financial freedom is equal to financial abundance, the availability of the resources plus time. There are people who have money but no time. No time to pray, no time to build, no time to spend a quality time with their children and their loved ones and their families. No time at all. They tell you no time. I'm busy. I'm busy. I'm busy. They started doing that when they were 20. Now they are 55. I'm busy. I'm busy. And then they die. Because on the seventh day, God rested. You, you are in the ninth day. You have not rested. You will die. Hallelujah. Let me tell you the reason why it's so easy to be rich in the 21st century. In the school of prosperity, especially in the 21st century, almost any and everything has a demand. There is a demand for almost any and everything. This is the reason why there should be no one here seated under the sound of my voice that in the next three years, in the next five years, should be poor. Impossible. There is a demand for just any and everything. The world is a global village. There is a demand for just anything. See? Right now, even people's laugh has brought them millions. Somebody just laughs. Is it not your ringtone? Oh, yes. Somebody just laughs around and does everything. That's side A. Does another one. That's side B. You see that? And you put it as your ringtone. And you go and download it and you do a lot of things anything at all anything a lady because she has nice fingers will make millions because she will market the ring of a jewelry company they just keep putting rings on her hand for every ring hundred thousand dollars can you imagine just for having a nice finger there is a demand for anything so you have been playing with that your hand could it be that that's the rod of god Just for being fine. You can wipe poverty away from your life forever. Right? Just for being not fine. You can still wipe poverty away from your life. Because you can be used in both ways. It depends on the message that is being communicated. I'm, I'm just I'm speaking generally. There is a demand for everything. Absolutely everything. No matter how little the skill is, there is a demand for it. Look at how pastors, you may sit down and think that there are already too many pastors. Allow the glory of God to come upon your life and see how many people will scrounge, scrounge after that. From today till Wednesday, non-stop, I have ministrations every day. I have a meeting morning and evening. You will think there are already enough pastors. No, no, there are seven points. Right? You think there are an, enough people selling pure water or whatever. It's because you do not know how many people are there. When you know there is a demand for anything. And I told you the formula. Once there is a demand, there is money. You go and meet somebody and say, borrow me 10 naira. He'll tell you, I cannot. But sell something, you pay for it. In the 21st century, brothers and sisters, you are only limited by your creativity.
There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. They will break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Write one word down, we're almost done. Creativity. Please write it. This is an important key in the school of prosperity. Creativity. What does it mean to be creative? Creativity is the ability to birth new or improved ideas. Oh, this is key to your life. The ability to birth new or improved ideas. If you lack this one ability, you will never be rich. Because that's the key to being different. That's the key to being unique. It's not just what you do. It's the uniqueness in it. And the key to being unique is hidden in one word. Creativity. The first revelation of God in the Bible was not as a savior. It was as a creator us in that image creativity what we were born to do anyone who has a mind has the capacity to be creative your destiny is at the mercy of your creativity this gentleman can produce this 30 minutes of deep intense worship just with instruments and he will pray and fast and train himself and just package something like this he can call it anything the dew of heaven, part one. Millions of these copies will be sold because people will put it in their phones. Can have a contract with most of the, 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 the people, iPhones and, and iTunes and all of these people. And they can put it, they can even put it by default in many gadgets. And it's blessing people. Millions of people are buying it. And this guy is getting blessed because there is a demand for everything. That's why Don Wen will never be poor. I know you gave your life to Christ at his soul, but he became rich because you bought the thing. Yes, he never sleeps, he never slumbers, but you bought it. Or at least it was given to you. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. They will break every chain. 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 Creativity is the key to effectively creating a demand for your gifts or your potentials. The reason why nobody has placed a demand on your gift is because you have not added creativity to it. The reason why your shop looks like that of every other person is because you are not creative about it. Let me tell you, in the world of prosperity, you lose by becoming like every other person. Your uniqueness is what stands you out. Your competitive advantage what you get in Koinonia that you will never get anywhere. It cannot be true. There is what you get from my life that you cannot get anywhere. There is what I should get from your life that I cannot get anywhere. This is your key to prosperity. Men will never come to you if there is an alternative to you. They will come to you to the degree to which you are born. give only four here school of ministry students will add two more and then that's about it any other one
us to be in a business or a corporate platform. Ready? Ecclesiastes chapter 11 verse 2. If we can get NIV, please give us NIV quickly. Ecclesiastes chapter 11 verse 2. Please let's save time.
problem is what many people call book writing is nonsense. They are just hungry people looking for money. So there is no excellence and no creativity. And at the end of it, only 100 copies are sold. And the bookstore tells you, please get out. But there is a key. Purpose-driven life. Right? Rick Warren, that one book brought tens and hundreds of millions of dollars. It was so profound. They had to create a workbook for it. Love and respect. There are many books that have become bestsellers, rediscovering the kingdom. Because individuals documented strong aspirations that rattled the ideologies of continents. Could there be a persuasion in your life? upon a gold mine and yet you are crying crying for food and crying for water the only limitation to your life should be the voice of God not lack of creativity it's God speaking to us education number three your job your job paid employment it's a stream of income so your job is not bad can get a job at least you receive salary from it and the beautiful part of that is that your salary can solve your short-term needs because you know every month a fixed income is coming so it can give you room to focus on other things that will take time to build how many have i given uh, let's stop at the last one, transportation. The only reason why oil and gas is useful is because there are human beings that need to move around. We love oil and gas, but we hate transportation. How unwise. I know that the resources are also used for a lot of things, but did you know that for as long as there are human beings on earth, there must be movement. You studied something that was a clue to your prosperity, but you forgot. Remember what we, I think it was in biology, social studies, Mr. Niger. Huh? Biology, Mr. Niger. Movement as part of the quality of living things. Is that not true? That was the key to your well that you have been neglecting. Every day, immediately after coin on your now. Listen, every week. I don't know how, okay, I have an idea. You cannot imagine how much is given to the transport. Sometimes in that big phone, only 300 naira will be there. And you can't make any call. You cannot even browse. Whereas you would have been able to buy even if it was a small golf. These are the kinds of businesses that you don't even need to know how to drive. Right? The, 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 the driver that carries me around, he started driving me three years ago. And within that three years, he has bought two extra cars. Two extra cars. And I tell you, a large percentage of that was for my money. Think about that. They are always happy. They, you never see them frowning. They are smiling because every time he sees me, he sees his destiny. And for as long as I need his services, I will keep paying for it. How many of you are sitting on millions, hundreds of thousands, roaming around, whereas or trying to get rooms and apartments to prove a point that does not have to be proved. You want to show people, now you live in a three-bedroom flat that is empty with one small mattress in one of the rooms and people think you are a big boy, you are not big boy or small. Whereas something would have been bringing you income. Let me tell you something. The transport sector is a mysterious sector people have never stopped. It's a sector that starts bringing you money instantly. From the first day the car goes out, by evening 5 a.m. in the morning, brothers and sisters, there are people who get up begging, whether it is town service, whether it is wherever. I know 
know someone who bought Kekena pen? Right? He just bought one, I think, second year or something like that. And then when he bought that Kekena pen, I think about 12,000 12, comes in every week. 12,000. He just went and registered it with the Association National Union, those their union. And then he's around praising the Lord and giving tight every week. And you are saying, This guy is he a thief? No, 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 no. Do you have to be smart to do that? This is you. You just have to be good. And that's why I told you there is no reason, brothers and sisters, for people. What's wrong with five people coming together? You all have 50, 50,000. Have a very well defined term. You don't need to wait till you have one million. What's wrong with three or four people coming together? All of them having 100,000 and you buy a golf in four or five months you are broken even and you can buy another one and then buy another one. While that is happening, you are busy increasing your financial intelligence. How much have you spent from January to this year to, to now? Some of you millions. Look at how many of our parents are sitting down and getting angry at people. How many times did they pay them arrears of just like you are paying for it and he said during orientation and uh, uh, what we call it graduation matric it can skyrocket to as much as 15,000 20,000 there is no single ice cream machine in Zaria not that all those ones that uh, they, they put the thing as if it's down I'm talking of real this standard look at this there are many of you sitting down what's wrong with 10 people who come in with creativity about 250 and go and open up something I guarantee you in one month you make your money back that's how desperate it is um, I like ice cream like what there's a place in Abuja every time they see me they're happy because they, my money will finish there I can't make it so I must pay for it whatever you cannot do for yourself be sure to pay for it if you ever get it free someone pay for it who is God speaking to tonight I'm showing you streams I'm a student I'm young very soon you will find out that the difference between you and graduation is one exam. Just one. And you come out and say, it's a lie. Maybe you say, get up. Okay, I'll finish. Go, 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 go.
I doubt if they are up to ten. Servicing at least ten or twenty thousand people. If you have one thousand more of those things, you will still be here. And yet we criticize those who are producing them because we have been we have been wired to consume. Psalm 66, please. Psalm 66, verse 12. Psalm 66, verse 12. Media, can you help us, please? Psalm 66. Please, everybody, write. 
arise. It's a very serious moment right now. It's a defining moment for many of us. Everyone read. One, two, read. outside can you give God a shout of praise I want you to intimidate those inside <laughs> hallelujah hallelujah no other name like the name of Jesus. That's the name. There's no other name like the name of the Lord. No other name like the name of Jesus is worthy of glory. He's worthy of honor. He's worthy of power and praise. Sing, there's no other name. No other name like the name of Jesus. No other name. No other name like the name of the Lord. Are you there? Acts chapter 3. The great general of God, before, before he left to be with the Lord, the man we know as Oral Roberts. At one time, he was the greatest healing evangelist in the entire United States. He walked in such magnificent levels of power and healing. And when asked, what's the greatest healing, the greatest secret to experience the healing and the miracle working power of God in a meeting, miracle crusade or whatever kind of meeting. I thought he was going to say greater anointing or great worship or good ushers, good sound system. But Oral Robert said something that But when a man has walked in a realm, listen to him. Hallelujah. Because you see, in their days, they didn't just minister to the crowds. He laid hands on thousands of people one by one. Hallelujah. They could lay hands on about five to 35,000 people from morning till night. He saw all kinds of miracles. Oral Roberts was a man of faith faith like a lion. Hallelujah. And shortly before he went to be with the Lord, he left the secret here upon the earth. And then he left to join the cloud of witnesses that are watching us today. And I want to share with you very briefly what a father of faith, a general indeed. These are men that the heavens will salute them as they are coming. You don't cry for their bed. The, the, they are the kind of people that you don't mourn their death. It's a thanksgiving, a promotion of a general. And Oral Roberts said, miracles happen in response to only one word, expectation. Expectation, Acts chapter 3. Lord Jesus, the power of God is so strong in this place tonight. 
now peter and john went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer being the ninth hour that will be 3 p.m our time he said and a certain man didn't tell us what his name was he said a certain man lame from birth was carried whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple which is called beautiful many men have commented in this scripture and said an ugly situation sitting at a beautiful gate hallelujah to ask arms of them that entered into the temple verse 3 who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple asked an arms and Peter fastening his eyes upon him with John said look on us then verse 5 let's read it together one to read he said and he gave heed to them what expecting to receive something although he was lame hallelujah and they kept him at the gates because in jewish days those people who were unclean by any standard could not associate themselves with the normal people but that man sat down there and although he could not move he didn't have a voice but the bible records that he had an expectation hallelujah and he voiced out his expectation every time people asked past him because he called on them and he said give me arms the bible says he expected to receive something and our father or our robot told us that this is one of the biggest secrets in the atmosphere where the miracle working power of god finds expression expectation hallelujah it's amazing how that believers come into the presence of god and we have no expectation hallelujah every time you come into god's presence you must have a well-defined well thought about expectation don't just come and say lord i know you will do what you will do no no because you see the realm of the spirit the anointing of god responds to your expectation your expectation is like a magnet in the realm of the spirit listen to me your expectation is the breeding ground for miracles you will never get a miracle if you don't expect one and even when you do you will not sustain it because you will not appreciate it an expectation will create hunger in you the woman with the issue of blood had an expectation and she said to herself if i may but touch the helm of his garment i shall be made whole." although it was violating the levitical law as far as it governed holiness and cleanliness at that time but she said i will risk everything i have an expectation I know that if I can only touch the hem of his garment. Hallelujah. Blind Bartimaeus, when Jesus was passing, and that would be the last time he would pass that street. Blind Bartimaeus, although he was blind, when he heard that Jesus was passing, the Bible says he cried. He said, Thou son of David, have mercy on me. And the religious people were kicking him away. And they said, Don't the Bible says he shouted them. There's something about expectation it it creates an atmosphere of faith your expectation is the heartbeat of faith hallelujah that i expect to receive and so you pray you plan you are not distracted when you come with an expectation you are not distracted you say lord there is an anointing tonight that will come upon my life and cause me to rise and rule your expectation prepares your spirit so that as the Holy Ghost is moving and blessing people your heart is open the Bible says he expected to receive something from them and indeed he received hallelujah tonight many of us have come inside and outside some have come with prayer requests some of you have fasted and prayed preparing for this meeting say Lord you will change my story and that of my family listen if god cannot help you then our gathering is useless our confidence is in the fact that god is able hallelujah able he's 
almighty all powerful every time god wants to release miracles into your life he begins to magnify himself suddenly you begin to see how mighty and the bible says they limited him in the wilderness by saying can god make a way for them and he supplied manna suddenly the holy spirit begins to remind you of the things that god has done that's why testimonies are important because it reminds you of the faithfulness of jesus moses instructed the people he said as your children grow make sure they don't lose touch of what god is doing and his miraculous act take out time to teach them let the children know every time they built altars they said when the children ask let them know that it was on account of the hand of god god is still doing miracles god is a miracle walking god are you listening to me you must convince yourself tonight tonight is not the time when you begin to question and say how can cancer disappear you see when i hear people ask these questions it's because they do not stay in god's presence when you stay in god's presence you begin to acclimatize to his realities hallelujah how in the world can you explain a genotype changing from ss to aa how in the world can you explain hiv going living a man one moment you are hiv positive one moment you are healed one moment you have cancer one moment you are on a wheelchair another moment you are up one moment someone is dead another moment is back to life listen i need you to understand that the secret of miracles is to realize that god is a creator see after me a creator you see unbelief the the environment that we live in has brought so much unbelief in us hallelujah when a lady begins to feel a lump grow in her nobody questions and says where did the molecules gather themselves and begin to crystallize together hallelujah and then to begin to grow and become a tumor but when we say it's disappearing people ask all kinds of questions and say where did it go to how did it come where did it come in the first place someone who was born and can hear suddenly becomes deaf and then they say this and this went bad and then we do not ask ourselves how did the deterioration start but when god is reversing the process we begin to question and say are these deaf people are they really hearing are the blind people really seeing when you understand that god is a creator say after me god is a creator and the creative nature of god is such that the only raw material that is needed is the word of god listen all that you see is not all that there is that's going to, i'm i'm giving you a revelation that will make you accept the miracle working power of god all that you see is not all that there is i hope you realize that there are insects in this place there are microorganisms in this place can you see them but you will know when you drop something here it will ferment after days is that correct the fact that your optical eyes cannot see the entire span of the universe and the things that god has created does not mean they are not in existence are you listening to me he was in a valley full of dry bones ezekiel 37 and he said son of man these bones are very dry one one bone is down there miles away kilometers away buried in, in the depth of the earth and he said son of man i want to show you something about the creative power of god's word i am about to speak and if you repeat after me every bone still knows his identity and it can connect back he said and as i spoke suddenly there was a sound the same sound in acts chapter 2 verse 1 down to 4 and 5 and 6 hallelujah the same sound is the sound of the creative power of god There are body parts in heaven all kinds of body parts listen god didn't stop creation the bible says for thou hast created all things for thy pleasure they are and were created they were created and are being created god is still creating things how did he create you in the first place how can a little seed come from a man and begin to grow until it becomes a full-grown baby 
we don't ask that question there is more to our realm than what our eyes can see we call certain cells unicellular how can a unicellular organism a fungi whatever it is enter your body whether through air or water and know exactly where your heart is as complex as you are you call it a unicellular organism and it has so much intelligence to go right to your heart and cause a heart condition hallelujah it will see your bones it will jump it will go everywhere and look for certain particular parts who told the unicellular organism that this is your brain why didn't it come here hallelujah that's the ex exact same where the power of god is the power of god is like a drug when it is released it goes into your body and begins to search every part that does not line up suddenly it moves if there's nothing wrong with your head it will move if there's nothing wrong with your hands it will go see we direct the power of god by the words that we speak that's why when we say kalsa suddenly by the spirit of god the anointing of god is moving that's why not everybody is affected when you mention certain cases the atmosphere of his presence you need to realize that the power of creation is what brings about miracles say so let there be and there was let there be and there was let there be and there was hallelujah a man called William Branham he walked in such dangerous realms of the prophetic that he would sit down in the bush and he would watch squirrels be created and just run into the bush that answers that question is it the egg that came first or the chicken it really doesn't matter any of them can still come hallelujah the, a man called Elisha the children laughed at him and said he was a bald-headed man the Bible says suddenly he called a beer where did the beer come out from just came out consumed them and went back Jesus Christ after the people searched for fish all through the night they couldn't catch any he told them he said cast your net at the right side the power of creation brought those fish you really think it's scientists that are preserving the resources in the earth there is creation going on that's the same way they can say ah you have no you have a missing body part and the creative word of god see the secret of miracles is the word becoming flesh see the bible says the word became flesh and did what dwelt so the word of god can become flesh are you following me now when it becomes flesh so the word of god can become a new heart the word of god can become anything you want it to be the word became flesh when it becomes flesh that's what you call a miracle the word becoming flesh manifesting in your midst hallelujah that's the first revelation the power of creation is the power of miracles number two everything in the earth animate and inanimate has the ability to hear this is a revelation that if you do not have the prophets were mad people they would turn to the earth and say oh earth hear ye the word of the lord when they stupid people how can a man speak to the ground oh earth hear ye the word of the lord joshua commanded the son and he said son hear me stand still you need to realize that there is more than science has taught you everything in the earth mr niger you call it use it and do very well in school but let me tell you when it comes to reigning in life you must realize that there are very good common characteristics between living things and non-living things one of it is that they all can hear 
they all have the ability to hear hallelujah they all have the ability to hear that's the reason why the native doctors in your village can sit down and come out and speak to the air I, I, I schooled in a very demonic place and uh, they had a supernatural ability to hold rain rain will not fall on their market days you will see heavy cloud by every geographical prediction it would have been rain you see the people moving happily carrying more goods to the market nobody is there's no emergency no stress no rain because certain ancient people understood this and then later in the night at about 2 a.m with no um no sign you suddenly see rain heavy rain that was the rain that would have fallen in the afternoon everything has the ability to hear the word of the lord number three what we call sickness please look up what we call sickness and diseases whether cancer ear problem all of these things i need you to know that there are demonic spirits and strongholds behind them are you listening to me you can give it any medical condition but i hope you realize whether it is through your carelessness or through whatever and so the secret of miracles really is the authority of the lord jesus christ dislodging the power of satan and then the anointing that comes with the word of god bringing a recreation are you following me now the bible tells us in the book of luke i think luke 12 about the woman who was bent over for 18 years hallelujah when jesus saw her he said woman thou art loosed look who bounded her because we just knew that she stood down but jesus saw in the realm of the spirit that this woman had been bound bound by what the power of satan and he said woman you are loosed from your infirmity do you realize that the bible says the woman was still bent over but she had been loosed then what happened he laid hands on her and brought her home. hallelujah so the purpose of the name of jesus is because that's the name the bible says at the mention of that name every knee shall bow of things in heaven of things in the earth and of things under the earth so the purpose of the name of jesus every time you come into a healing meeting you see we emphasize the name of jesus because that's the name that's the name that all authority and all power every authority you can imagine in the universe and in the heavens has been vested in that name jesus so when we mention that name all the demons and the principalities and the powers and even nature and all the biological components of your body realize that that is the authority of creation then as the anointing of god goes in answer to the name of jesus to the power of his spoken word creation begins to happen and suddenly someone who is deaf in his ears suddenly finds out i can hear why because you see the purpose of the anointing is to make earth look like heaven are you following me now the anointing is god's energy it's his ability to do work and so every time the anointing of god is released it's released in response to the word of god and it's supposed to bring your life to conformity with the atmosphere of heaven so when we worship and we begin to release the word of god what happens everything that does not represent the atmosphere of heaven begins to leave and demons begin to leave and imperfections begin to adjust themselves so what is your role tonight expectation the creative one is in our midst his word is strong in our midst the bible says that the shout of a king is in the midst of them and god is ready to do great and awesome things but you see if you just come and you want to watch miracles and things happen and say wow another powerful meeting you, you shouldn't be a spectator tonight you must come and say lord you are a creator even if it is over your finances it took god seven days to create the heavens and the earth i don't know how long 
calculate it mathematically how long will it take him to change your story hallelujah I know it doesn't change a whole land called Samaria their economy changed overnight overnight see the word of God is powerful when the word of God is spoken it knows no limits hallelujah so you send a word to your father who has been bounded and is just moving in the village and the word of God takes a hold of him suddenly things begin to change you must believe in the power of God's word hallelujah you must have expectation I'm telling you your own role tonight number one is expectation have a high expectation don't limit God the Bible says the prophet told her go and borrow vessels he said borrow not a few borrow vessels borrow vessels and the Bible says when there was no more vessel the oil kept flowing and so tonight enlarge your capacity have great expectations that's why we ask everyone to come with your request if you're here and you've not written your prayer request get something it's not just a ritual it's not just a ritual friends we have received testimonies in this place and I'm glad that these testimonies have happened in them among people that you can you know and you can relate with expectation number two you must take steps of obedience say steps of obedience this is probably one of the biggest reasons why people do not receive in our text Acts chapter 3 listen the Bible says something let's read verse 6 Acts chapter 3 verse 6 then Peter said silver and gold have I none but such as I have give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ rise up and walk hallelujah I, I, I used I, I did an illustration with this and let me do it again Mike can you come or Ruben come with your chair and let's do an illustration I am Peter the only difference is that I'm wearing a suit hallelujah okay so this is Peter please sit down watch this this was the man at the gate beautiful lame from birth are you following me now now Peter comes to him and says silver and gold have I known he said but such as I have give I unto thee listen he said in the name of Jesus of Nazareth rise up and walk guess what happened the man was still sitting there I'll show you in a moment the man didn't get up he didn't walk he looked as though he didn't receive a miracle he had expectation but he didn't have the second point steps of obedience and let's let's read what happened verse 7 are you ready one to read and then Peter took him by the right hand that means he was still seated and Peter said Mr. Man it doesn't work that way give me your hand watch this this sign shall follow not go before follow as you take steps of obedience the signs follow what does it mean to follow lead the way with your step of faith God is committed to a performance this sign shall follow hallelujah and so when if if you are deaf in one ear and they say or two ears and they say lay your hands your participation is part of the progress the, the process that brings your miracle hallelujah and they say be healed check yourself just go ahead and check yourself many people just sit down like like one of the ministers was sharing steps of obedience hallelujah you receive your miracle by faith you declare it the bible says that 10 lepers met jesus and they beckoned on him to heal them he said go and show yourself to the priest the bible says as they went as they went suddenly they found out that they were healed these signs shall follow and so peter reached out and the bible says as he took him up suddenly he now committed the power of god to work listen to me listen one of the reasons why many people do not receive miracles is they are not taught how to receive one are you listening to me it's not just when you are called out maybe by word of knowledge and all of this no whether or not your case is mentioned 
once that atmosphere is there the atmosphere where the manifested presence of God is with his killing power you open up your spirit and you receive and you say in the name of the Lord Jesus I receive thank you Jesus suddenly you begin to do what you couldn't do before if you couldn't walk well suddenly you begin to walk don't say can I leave the first leg you take the step and you will receive a root shock suddenly you will find out that the energy and the ability of God comes in as simple as this is this has brought tremendous miracles let me tell you I'll share one testimony one of the most profound miracles that I've seen in my life is the miracle of a dear gentleman his brother was in this school I'm sure he has graduated maybe, maybe two or so years ago this guy was in these are verified stories you can find out in from Shika hallelujah and he was working in a, I think the war college or army something naval school or something like that and then he had an accident now I don't know what they call it a kind of fracture where this bone is damaged badly I follow me now and this guy was in a situation they wrapped his neck you know with all of this the pop that they put and it was a dangerous situation they had to they told the parents they would need to bring specialists and the neurosurgeons who would come the chances of his survival if at all is very 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 faint hallelujah and then i didn't know much about the healing power of god and the miraculous so I was I think around chapel in the night they told me about him a lady called Rebecca Rebecca Lamai she graduated remember her hallelujah and so she told me about the situation I said God will heal that guy and you know there are some miracles that when you say God will do it the recipients, the recipients say amen meaning oh God do what only you can do I don't want to know anything about just do it and I shared this to the glory of God. I called him night call. Hallelujah. And the guy was in pains. He was shouting. I said, gentlemen, I didn't call to sympathize with you. I called to tell you you will be healed right now. The guy was shocked. I mean, what kind of faith is this? I told him, I said, all right, so talk to God about your miracle. And then I'll call you back in five minutes. I was trolling. He was on phone. Hallelujah. And I called him. Let me confess, I don't know if I was expecting the miracle to happen. I'm not sure. Well, I, I, now I know I wasn't sure then, but then I think I, 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 was, I thought I was sure. Hallelujah. I was just trying to pray, you know, experiment everything and learn lessons from it. After all, I didn't collect money from him. I had nothing to lose. So when you collect money, you are committed to back up what you have done. Hallelujah. And now, I just believed in the power of God. And before I called him back, I said, Lord, do this miracle. You are faithful and you are able to do it. I didn't feel anything. No goosebumps, no anointing, no prophetic word hitting me. And God said, now, son, today you step into the miracle. Me. No, nothing. I didn't feel anything. In fact, I was hungry that morning. Hallelujah. And I called him. And when I called him, it was obvious he didn't believe. He just wanted me to do this thing and, and get out. And I said in the name of the Lord Jesus and suddenly I felt in my spirit God was saying don't say be healed describe what you want to happen and I said in the name of Jesus I command new vertebral column completely from his neck down watch this as soon as I did that I told the guy I said remove your bracelet you know that's risky isn't it you don't want a family to travel all the way and come and meet a young man and say you are the idiot that is causing this thing to our family do you know how much money we have spent if you have not stood before the burning bush don't go before pharaoh you will die for nothing you will die for nothing are you listening to me and then i told him remove your bracelet and uh, that that thing he was putting suddenly this guy removed it god is my witness you remember i shared the story and this guy began to shout he said Jesus he touched his neck and that was a real 
miracle. That's the kind of miracle you want to document when we are 30 years in ministry. That's the kind of miracle I would. That well, it may not look like a big deal now because of the great revelations of God. It was a big deal for me then. Seeing the word of God come to pass. This guy held the phone and ran to his mother's room. I was still hearing. He tapped her. He said, Mommy, I'm healed. The woman shouted, I had it. Jesus. She had never seen that kind of miracle. And they got up. I was so happy. I said, Lord, this anointing is working. Ah, no. I won't lie to you. I celebrated that miracle. Hallelujah. The next day, they called the father. The father was shocked. He said, this is not true. They said, who? They said, one brother from Zaria prayed in the morning. And the father came. When the father saw the son, he began to weep. Are you following me now? They, they told the brother from Congo. The brother could not believe. He said he must trace that person and come and look for him. The next day, you know how burial is. That's how people gathered. All the friends came to the house. They took the x-ray from Shika. And immediately, the day they took it, the doctors and the nurses called me from Shika. So many people, sorry, my son, I have small cancer. I have small this. Hallelujah. I wonder who you are celebrating, but I hope it's not me. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? I was shocked. And then I saw how the effect of one real miracle. One real miracle. Not fake miracles. Not stage managed miracle. Say this eye is not working. Are you seeing? No. No, I'm not talking of stage managed. Real manifestation of the power of God. And when I saw the x-ray before and after truly i knew that that song that says god is a miracle worker i truly knew that god is a miracle worker i'll never forget when we went for our crusades we we're trying to trust god everybody was putting the word of god we we're so going to pray i want to stir up your faith and you see then he and i was not big like this i think this was about maybe one two three the first three rows all of us men of faith i encouraged them and Jimmy was almost giving up he said the way these villages were not ready to go and die for anything for nothing <laughs> hallelujah mother said i took my child from ogun state to come and die in the north <laughs> and when we got there when it was time to pray for the sick you know crusades in the villages it's women that come and they are elderly women they are not young people that you can call them and say please please, please don't say it happen no elderly women if they are not healed you are saying are they healed mm, i'm not healed <laughs> hallelujah and so we i remember when we came i remember a jimmy went to a woman and he laid hands on her shaking and just trusting oh god don't disgrace me here and when he asked the woman he said are you healed the woman said yes he thought he was playing the power of god and from that time till today until forever god has been faithful bringing miracles upon miracles to the glory of his name what's the purpose of miracles to point jesus to point people feel the love and the compassion of Jesus Christ. If it is true that he is a loving God, then miracles prove that he is, does not want your life to be the way it is. Now miracles are not just about healing, finances, your life, delays, marriages, all of these kinds of challenges. And tonight, I don't know what expectation you came here with tonight, but I know my God, my God, the one I serve is not just the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. He has become my God. I was diagnosed of fungal infection. There was nothing the doctors did in my life. They did their best. I took every kind of antibiotic you can talk about. I was tired of injection. This head was literally rotting. They told me I would never be able to have hair on my head again. I said, oh God, this is not my negotiation with you. And today I'm a testimony of the miracle working power of God. 
I was diagnosed to have an eye condition. Hallelujah. And it was so bad. And one time, I was watching Benny Hinn. And then while he was ministering to the sick, I got down on my knees. I had expectation. I said, Lord, before I finished speaking, he said, there is a young man in Africa. You're on your knees right now. You have eye condition. Suddenly, light. I'm not just giving you stories. Light came from the television. Just hit my eye. That was it. I know God is alive. Many of you are too innocent. You have not had cause to need a miracle. You see, for people who say, I don't believe in miracles, I have only one answer for them. The day you need one, you will believe in it. The day you truly need one, and the doctors tell you, I'm sorry. Remember the gentleman who was healed here, Sadiq Ibrahim. How many of you remember him? That terrorist guy. He came and he had about two weeks to leave. He was seated outside right here. He's on video. You can get it from the media department. Came HIV, tuberculosis, demons, all kinds of things. Curses from wherever. This gentleman got healed totally with his medical verifications. The doctors could not believe it. Born again, filled with the Holy Spirit. And tonight, Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive. Father, I thank you because you are in the midst of your people. I thank you because you have given us the word. Thank you because you have equipped us with the anointing. Lord, I thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit. There is no other name. I bow before you, my Father. You are the great one. Let the people know I am not the healer, oh God. I pray, let the people know that I have no power in myself. Not any of the ministers in ourselves. We are not ashamed to declare that the purpose of the miracles you will perform tonight is for Jesus to be Lord. And we declare that we love you. That souls will be saved tonight. Lord, I worship you. Thank you for your compassion. Thank you for cancers that will die. Thank you for restorations. Thank you because you will give everyone a testimony. Oh, I give you praise. My Father, Abba Father, thank you for all the things that you will do in our midst. Your wonder-working power. Lord, let no one leave this place without being healed and blessed. Spirit of the living God, you walked with our fathers of old and you wrought wonders through the hands of the ancient. And now in this day and in this time, I pray that you breathe upon us once again. Breathe upon us, O oh God. And let us taste of the breath of heaven. Forever you will be the lamb upon the throne. Oh, I worship you for the privilege of serving you. I gladly bow my Come on, bless his name forever. Your majesty, I bow before your majesty, Jesus, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the miracle worker. Come on, worship him. Oh, 
For this purpose was the Son of God made manifest that he might destroy, liquidate, and he lays the works of darkness. Hallelujah. 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 I need you to know that God is going to begin to move strong. Causing people to walk in glory. I sense the love and the power of God in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please rise up on your feet. Inside and outside. God is already healing. I sense the power of God. I believe. I believe, Lord, I believe, Lord, I Let your faith believe. rise. I believe, I believe, Lord, I believe, I believe. Lord, I believe, Lord, I believe, Lord, I believe, Lord, I believe. Lord, I Lord, I believe. 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 Lord, I Lord, I believe. Now, listen to me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen to me. Now, there are people here who have been oppressed of Satan. Hear me inside and outside. The power of God is here to deliver. I don't know why God always starts on this note. Hallelujah. But in a moment, the power of God will sweep across this entire congregation inside and outside. And all those under the yoke of bondage now is the time I proclaim the time of liberty the time of liberty the time of liberty lift your hands everybody the time of liberty the time of liberty in the name of Jesus every demonic oppression go 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 Inside and outside, now by the power of the Holy Ghost, go be delivered inside and outside. Let the fire of God 
tongue. Every demon possession. Leave God's people. Now. In the name of Jesus. I see the fire of God. I see rings of fire. 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 Bring them out. Bring them out. Be free! Be free! Be free! Be free! Be free! Right now! Outside! Be free! Outside! Be free! Hallelujah! My God! I see the angels of God holding something like a scissors. That's what I see. As the power of God falls, I like you to bring them out. None of you will escape in this row. I see a number of you now. Let the power of God fall upon you, Satan. Your reign ends in their life in the name of Jesus. Let's help them all out here outside, outside, outside in the name of Jesus. Let the fire of God fall, burning everything that is not done. Hallelujah. 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 This lady has been tormented. That devil now. I command you. Come out of her by the power of the Holy Ghost. Come out of them. Come out of them. Bring this lady for me. Bring this lady for me. Bring this lady for me. How wicked spirit. Come out of her right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Come out of her. I see a snake rolling over this girl. This one lying down. That devil. Come out of her in the name of Jesus. Holy Easter. The whole I see, the whole I see, I'm hanging in the Lord, in the, the whole I see, the whole I see. Tonight, Satan has no reign over your life. Listen, those of you outside, those of you outside, I like all of you to shout Jesus. Listen, hold on. Hold on. God is not done yet. 
especially for those outside are you ready those of you outside the power of god will fall shout jesus those outside the power of God is falling setting men free hallelujah please bring this lady bring all of them outside that's what I see bondage Therefore God has so highly exalted him and given him a name that is above every other name. I set you free now. Now, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. set free be set free now by the power of God she's giving herself over to look here the demons try to speak that is above all names if God be God leave her just let her go let her go don't hold her again for that demon leaves you forever just let her lie down it's gone be sure of that the lady is free Her family has been tormented. Listen, many of you didn't listen to what her family has been tormented. That's what I see. There has been all kinds of setbacks and challenges. Her family has suffered so much. And God brought her on behalf of her family. And we proclaim liberty forever. Indeed, you, your family will know you attended a miracle service. Please call this lady, this one, bring her.
Deborah. 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 Who is Deborah? And then I'm hearing another name. Is it Ndahi? Something sounds like Ndahi or something. ND something. Who is that? That's your name? Okay, you're Deborah. I'm hearing a name like Ndahi. Is it Ndahi or there's NDA something? Who is that person? Hallelujah. Please listen attentively because God is bringing words to help you. The Lord still calls that name for me again. Ndahi. Is it Ndahi or Nda something? Who is that? Is it any of you? What's your name? every morning and um, the right side the right side you've had an issue with it for a very long time in fact you're afraid of going to the hospital just the right side from your heart down severe pains it happens especially when you wake up in the morning who is that you're the one come listening to me you came with an expectation even for your father is that correct i want you to know that god has answered your prayer this for you is a new is a miracle service hallelujah um you or one of your relatives here has been writing jam i see someone walking into a post you and me I've been writing jam. Yeah. Why were you afraid of lifting your hands? God wants to set you free. Did you buy jam for me? You bought this jam for me. This is the last one you are going to write. The very last one. The very last one you are going to write. Your elder brother does business. Hallelujah. Please let's hurry up. 
up so we can save time. I see an elderly woman outside. miracle meeting we declare I sense the power of God strong upon seven years without a child who does that case seven years exactly seven years that's the this is the prophetic year go and tell her she will take in in three months from now and she will give birth. <laughs> of Jesus for all the people you are standing for we release miracle children right now miracle children in the name of Jesus and for some of them I command that fibroid to come out of the womb and let them be able to take in we decree it we declare it receive it right now in the name of Jesus God bless you please go back quickly hallelujah now, if you have any kind of heart condition, heart condition, please come out quickly. Hold in your heart, uh, abnormal heartbeat, whatever it is, please come quickly. Inside and outside, heart condition. Do we have people with that kind of situation? 
any heart condition please come quickly heart condition we give you the highest condition now is the time for you to be healed for you check yourself right away are you listening to me check yourself right away and begin to do the things that you couldn't do are you listening to me those with peptic ulcer get ready Step in. God 
God brought you out here and we are going to pray for you right now. Enough is enough. Are you listening to me? We are going to pray. In the name of Jesus, I declare upon all of you standing here, we release miracles. Every spirit of madness now be free from it. You are standing on behalf of your brothers. I command freedom and emancipation by the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Please go back to your seat. Peptic ulcer. Peptic ulcer. Just lift your hands where you are. Peptic ulcer. You are suffering from peptic ulcer. Who is that person? Please come out. Just come out. Peptic ulcer. Quickly. Inside and outside. Those with peptic ulcer. Just lay your hands as I pray for you. I'll release the power of God upon you and you'll be healed right now. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, everyone here I declare, be healed now. In the name of Jesus, now be healed. See, the power of God is so strong. In the name of Jesus, be healed, totally healed, totally healed. I declare your healing in the name of Jesus. Sir, God has healed you. You, God has healed you right now. In the name of Jesus. God bless you. Please check yourselves. We'll try and see if we can take testimonies today. God bless you. Go back to your seat quickly. Hallelujah.
tonight some of us came with sicknesses in our bodies some of us came with all kinds of depression demonic challenges some of us just came to press koinonia to press for more hallelujah but it doesn't matter what what brought you I like you to know that this is part of the experience. Every time we worship him, we are not just singing choruses. Hallelujah. is a response to a dimension of him. Hallelujah. I'd like you all to join me, sing just one song, and we'll look at the word of God. I want more of you. I want more of you, Jesus. The more I know you, make it a real cry. You mustn't sing the song. It's not composing to sing the song. Sing it out of revelation. Let that be the cry of every saint in this place. I want yes, Lord, I've healed the sick. I've casted out devils. I've raised the dead. I but I know there is more. Teach me your way. Jesus, the more I know you. The more I know you. The more I want to do. The more I truly desire to do. Lord touch me tonight I've not just come for a program please pray and say Lord touch me tonight teach me your ways show me something about your nature about your glory open up a window like my brother said cause my eyes to see something cause my eyes to see a reality in the kingdom help me see more of you that's our cry. Koinonia is the place where we cry. More of you.
let's praise him with a string instrument these are mysteries in the spirit Lord I express Once again, I want to welcome everybody. Hallelujah. Be seated in God's presence. I believe. I believe. Lord, I believe. Lord. is able to do this it's not a scientific act of wisdom you can't write textbooks on this when it comes to transformation and impartation there's no textbook you can only give people an idea of your experience it's the ministry of the holy spirit to human men hallelujah hebrews chapter 12 Lord, we truly love you. We truly love you. We truly respect you. We're a breed of men and women who mean business with you. Hebrews chapter 12. Hallelujah. I'd like us to read the first three words if you have King James almost all versions should be the same are you ready? one, two, read no, no, verse two, sorry verse two, one, two, read you people are all failed, come down I said the first three how many, what kind of, some versions are you're reading Amplified Hebrews 12. Did I say Hebrews what? Verse 2. Just the first three words. Looking up to Jesus. Hallelujah. Is it, is it on your Bible? Looking on to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Look up, please. It's amazing how that many believers want to press into God. We want to be more like Him and um, many believers want to grow we want to step into dimensions hallelujah but then until you have a reference point are you following me now until you have a reference point you will not know when you have become what you are pursuing hallelujah every time you are pursuing a thing you must have a picture so that when you get there or when you get whatever you are pursuing you will know you have arrived 
am i correct there are so many believers who want to know the lord but we've not taken out time to examine his life i've had very little teachings about the person jesus i've had different teachings about the anointing i've had different teachings about um growth spiritual growth and all of these things but how come we want to become like christ and we never get to talk about him the only time they talk about jesus in meetings is crusades and they just summarize my story out march to the front hallelujah if please appreciate the music director let me use this sir. he's so smart hallelujah come on appreciate him hallelujah now if my goal is to become like him hallelujah the more i see him are you following me now i look at his life and then i begin to see a need to conform my life to look like him are you following me now but if you do not see him you don't have an idea of what you are supposed to be changed into hallelujah so several believers in their honest and sincere pursuit for god are being changed into different things and what we are becoming does not look like the jesus that we are trying to be so different teachings and revelations are molding us to become different things because the object our reference point we don't even know the kind of person we want to be like who is our standard the reference the jesus we preach about so many things yet the central focus the one who we are supposed to be like we don't have an idea and so every kind of teaching forms us to become like a prophet an apostle a member of so and so ministry are you following me now a member of so and so denomination because you become like whoever is your reference point hallelujah if all you have to see is your pastor you become like him you'll be very fortunate if your pastor is like christ then you become like Christ. But if your pastor is not like Christ, hallelujah. And it's important that in our attempt to press into the things of the Spirit, see, the realm of the Spirit is a very complicated realm. You can become anything. All you need to do is press. You want to be a herbalist, press. The method is the same. I mean, the requirements are almost the same. You want to learn how to still press. You want to know Satan more? Just press. So, as you press and say more of you, you suddenly enter a strange realm. And then you see many things that you can become like. And it's important to scan through. And several things will present pictures that represent success, greatness, achievement. You've got to drive them away and say, there's one I'm looking for give me a reference the word of god has painted a picture that is in my mind and you are nice but you don't look like the reference i can use you you can guide me but i do not see you being the reference you are a good leader but i do not see the reference in you and suddenly when the holy ghost helps you you say this is him when mary began to look for him they were looking around and when she found him she said rabboni she knew that he was the one are you following me now so the first question tonight is who are you pressing to become like because we have molded ourselves in different fashions that in our sincere quest to love god we found ourselves becoming many things hallelujah there is only one standard that's why i started by reading it says looking up to who Joshua Selman, Koinonia, yourself, your pastor. No, no, I, I believe in the place of spiritual guidance. Are you following me now? But I'm teaching you that for maximum transformation, this is the dynamics of real transformation. Let me tell you something, friends. The best of every man on this earth is still a man. Are you listening to me? The best of every man is still a man. looking up to jesus the author and the finisher of our faith our reference point our gauge the true standard hallelujah you look up to jesus to know what success should look like in the kingdom you look up to jesus 
to know what progress should look like in the kingdom you look up to jesus to know what fulfillment should be jesus christ is perfect theology he's the expression of the full intention of the father for every man when he came and walked upon the earth the bible says the word became flesh god needed to give us a reference so that we will pattern our lives after that reference and so jesus walked upon the earth and he exhibited all the attributes we are trying to exhibit so if you want to be rich by the time you become a millionaire you look to jesus if what you have become doesn't look like who he is you followed another way and that means there's disaster are you following me now if you want to be anointed by the time you touch what you call anointing and it does not look like what you see in jesus christ then you know that you got something else it says looking it didn't say wishing or dreaming looking set your gaze onto jesus as you press it's a scene then that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses let us lay aside every weight and the sin that doth easily beset us and let us run so hebrews chapter 12 is talking about the race the pressing he said but hold on paul had told them run so many of them want to start running say hold on i need to let you know that as you are running and as you are pressing let your gaze be on jesus so that you will know you can appreciate your progress i follow me now you can know when when you are truly looking out to jesus you will know whether you are growing or not hallelujah paul said my little children in whom i travel until christ be formed in you and so it's our greatest desire to be with him koinonia and the holy spirit is here to guide us and help us when we stay in his presence then we become like him and then when we become like him we are empowered to reveal him in our world Emmanuel. Emmanuel. your name is called your name is called Emmanuel. is our desire in this place that as God equips us for the glorious destiny he has for us as he equips us to represent him it's paramount that we understand that our goal is to be like Jesus the Bible makes us to understand that the apostles when they met Peter and he spoke at the Jerusalem council they looked at him and they said we know this guy this is a an ordinary fisherman but he had been with Jesus so much that he was like him when they went to Antioch the people saw them and said remember there was a man who behaved like this he loved people just like these people are loving he healed the sick remember that man that was crucified don't you see him being reproduced there's a soup opera that many of you like about a man whose spirit entered another man what do we call it second chance his spirit entered another man and he started behaving like him is that correct so when the spirit that was in Jesus comes and begins to find expression in you men begin to see that the closest expression to the Jesus I can see is you how come 
your love life looks so close to what I see in the world how come your understanding is similar every time I read see if the people in your community read the Bible and they don't think about you you don't look like Jesus because you should be the closest expression of everything they find Colossians oh Lord make us more like you it's our desire make us more like you are you ready tonight the Lord is going to be walking on us very briefly hallelujah the Lord is going to be walking on every one of us God is building us radically pruning us and bringing us to points where we truly become competent ambassadors to represent his government our goal is not just to get ourselves spiritually enlightened nobody has received an award for reading Genesis to Revelation nobody has received an award for criming scriptures from Genesis to Revelation all those who have been loved by God are those who have dared to make the Word of God seated in their spirits so much that they become like him church history is full of men and women who were the representation of Jesus in their generation hallelujah Colossians chapter 3 and I read verse 1 if you then be risen with Christ seek those things which are above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God verse 2 set your affections such a powerful if you're ever looking for a scripture that talks I, I'm not done I'm just stopping because the scripture is really touching me if you're ever looking for a scripture that addresses true Christian character and the life the exemplary life of a believer you find it in Colossians chapter 3 and 4 so for many of you who have been crying and say God walk upon my character two chapters for you Colossians chapter 3 and verse 4 have revealed the highest manifestations of Christian conduct set your affections on things above not on things of the earth that's what we call carnality that's what we call materialism setting your affections on things on the earth and not on things that are above where Christ is seated verse 3 for ye are dead and your life is hidden with Christ in God when Christ who is our life shall appear then shall we also appear with him in glory verse 5 now we begin mortify therefore your members listen look up i hope you know paul was not speaking to unbelievers hallelujah he wasn't speaking to unbelievers he was speaking to men and women who were going to shake the cities he said mortify deaden Let's read on. Your members which are upon the earth. Then he says fornication, uncleanliness, inordinate affection, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. For which things sake the wrath of God cometh upon the sons of disobedience. In the which ye once walked when ye lived in them. But now put off all of this are you are you there tonight god is going to be walking upon us as i as i read the list i'll not be doing too much of talking let the word of god speak some things will be flogging you from this scripture it will rise out of this bible and hit you some are already hitting me as it hits you yield to that hitting tonight is not the night where you pretend as though he's touching your neighbor because i will share and then we'll raise a cry are you listening to me we want to truly represent the kingdom in its fullness let me tell you the proof that you are truly christ-like is not when you heal the sick if you have to pray in tongues for your community to know you are a christian you are not a real christian that every time they see you you display at your default the attributes of the christ life there's nothing as beautiful as seeing the manifestation of the gifts of the spirit come upon a truly yielded life 
full of character and expression of the fullness of what Christ is did you know that your lifestyle affects people even more than your, what you do on stage hallelujah there are certain people that respect you today and especially for we ministers not because of the sermon you preached you truly represented Jesus at a very default state somewhere that you do not even know there are many of you that are treasured and held in high esteem not because you've healed any sick body hallelujah the man we call um, the great evangelist Billy Graham it wasn't recorded that he had many manifestations of the spirit in his meeting if he had any at all we don't have records that he of course there will be pockets of miracles here and there but he didn't seem to in quote as we will put moving power you know have everybody lie down and say okay you know this and that but till today there's no president in america that doesn't go to pay homage whether he's a freemason whether he's born again what did that man show the world that compelled the united states of america to put it it was is almost a law there are certain people that seem to command the attention of their territories because they are the truest representation of christ has nothing to do with denomination has nothing to do with whether you are orthodox or pentecostal living faith cooking celestial church whatever it is that's not the issue hallelujah so let's read on this is koinonia we're becoming more like him Are you there verse 8 put off all of these are you ready to hear the this now all right anger anger oh put off these dear ambassadors of the most high those who want to represent him put off all of these yes you are anointed yes you can heal the sick yes you are prosperous you're a multi-millionaire but put off this anger wrath malice come on anointed people malice hallelujah i hope you like this teaching tonight blasphemy filthy communications Ha, look up channel O and MTV and all kinds of media programs have cultured the language of many people including believers and so it's true that you are born again you are serving in church you are anointed I mean all you need to do is blow them and you see people just moving around but evil communication your communication has made people question the anointing upon your life and people say i cannot reconcile what i see on stage with what i see around i can't reconcile it and the bible says so that this thing will not corrupt your being an ambassador lay aside even filthy communication let's read on lie not to one another verse 9 ah! nigerians lie not to one another businessmen lie not to one another prospective politicians lie not to one another those who are seeking favor from different people lie not to one another hallelujah seeing that you have put off the old man the Bible calls all of these the attributes of who? The old man. And we have so many new creation people. I have been crucified with Christ. Hallelujah. But when you are shouting new creation, this is part of it. You must embrace the entirety of it. You can't embrace prosperity and wealth and anointing and power and charisma. And then you refuse to embrace this because it wasn't written in the Old Testament. For many of you who have a serious problem with the Old Testament, 
there's a nice scripture centered around the New Testament. Hallelujah. A woman called an around tree were trying to get her books so that we'll stock it in a library within the gates and the priestly bride. I like studying on people who have been to heaven. I love it. We all love it because after the Bible, they are the closest that can say things that I like. We have many noisemakers writing all kinds of books. Before they write the book, they have calculated how much the profit is. Both upper limit and lower limit. You, do, you really don't have a desire to bless the world. And so, we need... Did you notice that most, if not all, the people that go to heaven come back and write books free? Or audio? I, I've, I've noticed this. Have you noticed that this is a trend? When they come back to heaven... They really don't want, even want to collect one naira. I'm not saying you shouldn't let your ideas bless you. So somebody is writing books now. You say, ah, you have started with me. No, no, no. Write your book. We'll buy it. Hallelujah. But this woman was with Jesus Christ. I mean, literally. In supernatural encounter. We have a series that we'll be considering. Called Supernatural Encounters. And we'll be playing some videos of men and women just like you and me. Who have walked some parts and realms where we're watching something uh, today in our house on a man who is transported by the spirit you know Philip's airways many of you call it we have real men who are doing Philip's airways not not imitation by our traditional people isn't that interesting and the guy said the Lord told him that a time will come we will need it hallelujah a time will come when they refuse to give us visas. We say, all right, have a nice day. I need to be at the airport in the next five minutes. How about that? If you don't believe this, you can have a nice day, honestly. Because this is, we are training you to become this. So if you have a problem with this mindset, the Lord is helping us in Jesus' name. And this woman was with Jesus Christ throughout 2005. Can you imagine? Throughout 2005, she was with Jesus Christ every day. You know, when I hear stories like this, I feel ashamed of what I know that I call revelation. Because when they asked this woman, I had, the, I, I still have it. I believe my laptop. Her interview with Sidroth is supernatural. And you know what this woman said when they asked her? Sidroth was asking and said, "Why don't you love? Why did you ask him about power, miracles, the revival coming?" Guess what she said? She said, I'm not interested. Ah, Joshua, he stung me. Oh. Me that have been pressing. Oh God, reveal the seventh dimension of power. Here is a woman who has been with Jesus for one solid year. She has become so much like him that her priorities have radically changed. If your priorities do not change in the presence of God, you are not really changing. Hallelujah. And now let me quote this woman. She... She said when she was in heaven, she saw, she entered a room and she saw the saints of old and the angels. They were mapping out the strategy for the revival that is coming. Hallelujah. So she was invited. They invited several generals who pioneered the ancient revivals and were asking them what were some of the challenges? Why did some revivals get corrupted? I follow me now. And one of the issues that this woman raised was the issue of character. Many people corrupted these revivals. Hallelujah. And so God is communicating to the entire fivefold ministry that while you are opening people up, that's why we have miracle services. We have time for impartation. But as you receive the anointing on one side, when you are about to run and say, you see how much I'll make you in one month with this money, as you're running God will hold your leg and say come back you have not finished reading it not too fast many of us are saying God give me this power and see all these millionaires people are suffering investment give me power but just one I know somebody that I can go and pray for the senator immediately is healed I'll tell him as you are healed collect uh, my bank account number hallelujah corruption and the man who is praising God suddenly begins to question you how many of you have been to a meeting and after a nice and powerful sermon they just begin to do funny things on stage that just kills your spirit you were so blessed i mean these people represented jesus christ so much 
and later on you see somebody with manasseh will just come and whisper something and says okay i'll address that and then as the air I mean celebrating miracles suddenly funny things begin to happen so i go and manipulate jamfa and i say jamfa just look straight there's one rich man there and because he has the gift of the prophetic it will work are you hearing me oh yes it will work let me tell you if we hold every one of you here i can tell you everything about your lives as the holy spirit grants grace that's the dangerous thing about the anointing hallelujah all we need to do is tear up the atmosphere and begin to pass mics around ourselves and you will see the accurate delivery of the word of god but what happens as i'm prophesying it you you follow this way and wait for me see let me tell you don't laugh about this the judgment of god is falling strong upon the church and god will prune and sanitize everything until we become a perfect bride a true bride that can represent you hallelujah and so a man gives a very pretty lady like this a wonderful word of knowledge you see the anointing working and suddenly the remaining unrenewed part of his makeup just looks at her and ah now this lady is already kneeling down because he gave her a powerful word your name is gladys this i know her so it's not a word of knowledge hallelujah and i know you your father is and she says yes yes sir says ah you want to know more follow me you just leave and and then he says please tell me more about my life and then he says all right i'll give you time just get my number when are we truly going to represent christ in a manner that will compel the world to know that there is something about this christianity let me tell you if it's only miracles who used to change the world we are going to be in trouble because voodoo is warming up are you listening to me confucius you need to go to asia and then you'll be home you know all these manifestations we do and shout i tell you the truth they'll cross their legs and stare at you like this because when you go there to visit a man as you enter his room you see him hanging on the air have you had, have you gotten to that dimension i'm saying it will take more than the gifts of the spirit are you following me there's a place for that the world will see miracles hallelujah but i'm saying it takes more than that what if everybody in your environment is healed what else will you do how else will you represent christ we have so many men of god nice people but then later you go and you just bribe in the office it's on your table all kinds of evil activities happen and the bible is saying for you to be a true ambassador you must be there's no escaping there must be a thorough worship. Hallelujah. So that who you are on stage and before people is who you truly are in the secret. When you get to that point, you are truly, you are practically and experientially entered the dimension the Bible calls holiness. Hallelujah. Can I preach this please? And then we raise a cry and pray because it will not profit us completely if all we do is just worship him and give him all the praise and you know all of us because we are praying in the spirit and you know the wonderful thing about the things of god is that when you operate a particular law of the spirit you will get the results so as you pray in tongues and you are diligent studying the word what happens your spirit is being trained so you are anointed you come and stand and all you need to do is begin to pray in tongues and you see this dense presence of God but as that is happening what happens lack of character begins to arise that's why Paul said I keep my body this body is stubborn you must keep it part of your ministry is to keep it hallelujah let's read on lie not to one another seeing that you have put off the old man and his deeds and have put on the new one man which is renewed in the knowledge the word there is not renewed the word there is being renewed hallelujah 
in knowledge after the image of him that created him verse 12 put on look up the bible first told us what we'll put off you see the difference between jesus christ and our false prophets they tell you the problem but they never tell you the solution say there's somebody what is the solution put off all of these things that do not give a true picture of who jesus christ is how many unbelievers have backslided because we have misrepresented christ in our social environment hallelujah i once took a bus with a pastor some years ago and we we're going somewhere for a crusade and i was chartering a car so i decided i told him come and let's ride together and while we we're riding we got somewhere and wanted to enter and um, they had blocked the place they needed us to turn and it would be a whole walk and when it was time to turn i mean the driver was about to turn and the security man said no the pastor just spoke through the mirror and conjured one lie ah i was i sat back in my mind i said god you know i love you i really love you when we finished he looked at me and then he smiled see the difference between an unbeliever and a believer is that when you trespass the principles of god the holy ghost you feel the check in you when you get to a point where you are comfortable with misrepresenting christ you need a retreat quick quick whatever it is that you're doing you need a radical retreat alone hallelujah praise the lord we must be thoroughly washed we want the power of the holy ghost we want the anointing many of us want to stand on the stage and have people come and hear you hear me brother if you're not thoroughly walked upon the anointing that comes on you can kill you you know we like anointing and you just pack it see that say manasseh i need all the grace upon your life not so my brother not in this revival that is coming there are some things that you don't get by impartation you walk it by your diligence and intimacy with the holy ghost hallelujah let's read up quickly because i really want us to pray and understand there will soon be a program in the church put on therefore as the elect of god holy and beloved are you ready now tender mercies kindness humbleness of mind meekness patience or long suffering he said forbearing one another and forgiving one another if any man have a quarrel against any even as christ forgave you do what if any man has a quarrel ladies even as christ forgave you do what above all these things put on what love which is the bond of perfectness let the peace of god rule your hearts to which also ye are called in one body and be ye thankful verse 16 let the word of christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs singing with grace in your hearts to the lord the last verse and whatever ye do in word or deed do it in the name of the lord jesus christ giving thanks to god and the father by him there is need for us and let me tell you something this is what i love about the orthodox circle you see let me say something let's assume this is orthodox and this is pentecostal so charismatic are you following me now the orthodox circle have done a great job in mastering the place of true christian character and morality that's why some of us who came from the orthodox background before getting filled with the holy spirit the remnant of that training still remains in us i follow me now and so many orthodox circles have rejected the side of the anointing i follow me now at the ministry of the holy spirit and they argue about tongues argue about all of this and live under the law and do all kinds of things but one thing i can tell you is that in many orthodox circles when someone is sick the next 12 20 30 minutes you see people rushing to come and greet him you hardly find that in pentecostal circles we always like celebrating 
when you buy a new car we can come to your house but when somebody is dead ah you are not supposed to die who wants to identify that's why in many pentecostal circles when their members die they send them back to the mother church they say go and bury them but when it's time to get married or celebrate a new post what happens i am your pastor are you getting blessed ah it's a nice message the lord help us hallelujah and so both the pentecostals and the orthodox circles they are not wrong both of them are incomplete the revelations of christ are complementary not supplementary are you following me supplementary means you can replace one for another the holiness movement was not a wrong movement the word of faith movement was not a, a wrong movement are you following me now the charismatic movement at Sousa Street was not wrong. But the trouble is, when we section out a movement and base our entire lives on it, we find out that we are missing on other ingredients that are meant to give us complete preparation. So we have men and women who are very holy and contrite. And the world can attest to the fact that we love God. But then the sick come and they keep getting sick. People are poor. People are not living the lives they are supposed to live. And then we have on one side manifestations of the spirit. Wheelchairs and all kinds of things. But when you talk about disorderliness and lawlessness, you still find it there. Hallelujah. And you see all kinds of things. Disorderliness. There must be a sense of decorum and maturity a level of character and punishment that the spirit of God brings in us hallelujah that's the reason why God is building us and equipping us so that we are not only anointed but we truly can represent him have you seen some people you always let me tell you the more you become like Christ the more you are well favored everyone wants to be around you hallelujah have you seen some people every time they come around you you don't know when you have removed something to sow into their lives or every time they come you seem to respect them you may be older than them but there's a carriage of his presence you see the character of the spirit you do something they are supposed to swallow you up and when you come they tell you it's all right i can't pretend i'm not angry but it's all right and you're like what kind of person is this until your life shocks your community such that they can say what kind of person are you some years ago the holy spirit asked me to draw a graph and write the fruit of the spirit versus their manifestation in my life and i was working in power raw power when i wrote it i was i was disappointed to the core a lot of people say josh you're a nice person oh you are gentle you are this when i plotted that graph i received grace to i don't know if i told the paper or not but it stung my ego because i said okay god so where is the ambassador hallelujah i choose to represent him in his entirety i choose to represent him that the same testimony that is given about me on stage should be the same testimony anywhere you know i i always share this and let me say it i was in a bus one time going to sabo hallelujah and in that bus there was an elderly woman then there was a the very little boy the conductor and he was shouting and just insulting everyone in the car you know you talk and you talk back and yell back and there was this elderly woman and i think she wanted them to reduce the price or something and this boy would not let this woman rest he was just shouting and murmuring and at a point i got agitated in my spirit i said can you imagine this boy this is this woman is old enough to be his grandmother and he's shouting and my old man wanted to just give this guy a dirty slap and suddenly the holy spirit put me in check and then when it was time for me to pay the bus fare he said ah uh, someone has paid when i turned back i saw one here and god thank you you know how to cover cover for our weaknesses we'll explain later on 
how many of you have corrupted the things God is doing in your life by certain attributes don't tell me it does not matter are you listening to me don't let anybody preach any gospel to you that true Christian character and conformity to the Christ like life does not matter it does oh yes it does when you are truly conformed to the life of Christ then you find out God can trust you God can bring more ladies for you guys so that you counsel them because he knows that there will not be need for an emergency meeting in heaven hallelujah God can bring money God can bring money or something and trust you and make you a millionaire and know that there will not be an emergency meeting in heaven trying to manage what you have become looking on to Jesus looking on to Jesus the author and the finisher of our faith I call us tonight to a point where we begin to re-examine our character there are certain languages that should not be found among believers hallelujah and many of us use them carelessly and we are very happy about that immediately you finish using the words you say oh, Jerry, let's pray and someone is just looking at you and then you tell the person i think you need the baptism you say me if the baptism will make me like what i'm seeing i'm not interested hallelujah god is raising and training leaders you know why i'm saying this because god is going to be committing ministries into our hands god is going to be committing wealth to our hands there are many people that when god blesses today little financial prosperity everybody around you becomes a slave they must lick your leg and then we claim we are acknowledging God God is bringing us to a point where we truly let our lives become windows so on one side you heal the sick cast out devils and manifest the workings of the gifts of the spirit and then on another side men see you full of the christ like life that they come and visit you when they bump into your house without invitation you will not need to arrange certain things and say where are these videos jerry yes stay back then you just bring up any him there is need for the manifestation of the christ like and let me tell you something there are two groups of people in this place those who say why did i come this night for this program I will be coming for only miracle service where there's no much preaching or those who say lord i contend for transformation i contend for transformation i i contend for transformation that's why many of you god has delayed you from running he has told you what he wants you to do you wonder why you are not ready on your mark set set has been for years where will go come when you hear this message and conform to it hallelujah as a lady everybody looks at you and they are seeing you very nice and pretty doing your hair and the guy just looks at you and says these are the kind of church girls that look like indisciplined ladies so the guy sags his jeans misrepresenting his maker and bouncing and coming and then begins to smoke in front of you and speak nonsense and says oh queen they like, really hallelujah he comes to you thinking you are so cheap and he can go away with you then when he comes you get two chairs and sit him down and begin to expound scriptures more perfectly by the end of that exposition you, you either say two things i repent or all right i'll see you later you say what of my number i say no thank you the true testimony of, about your life it's not supposed to be heard among believers but unbelievers only unbelievers have the right to attest to the fact that you are living a christ-like life or not and as god gave me this message to prepare i felt like dying because i said god why do you give me messages that will flog me first on stage as i'm preaching right now i know the areas god is saying when you finish let's go and do our own finish your delivery 
how many of us have seen a need to cry unto God and say Lord I need to conform I've been looking up to many things and I've been gauging my progress based on aberrations and things that are not Christ but we must come to a point where we align hallelujah looking up to Jesus the Bible says put off malice bitterness don't say I was born like that all of us are like that in our family you step on my show I match you and give you a piece of my mind and go back to sleep that's how I am I'm that kind of person then you must change because the Bible says therefore if any man is in Christ he's a new creation but you must press that's why we worship him as you worship him you find out that the miracles you need in your life are not just bodily you need certain radical levels of transformation let me tell you something the more you are conforming to Christ the more they want to make you a leader everywhere in your department in your faculty there are many of you who just see someone who come and say sorry is there something I can do for you I want to help you wash your clothes you wonder why they are seeing something in you let the weight of your glory cover us let the light of your river flow Let the truth of your kingdom Let the weight of your glory Let the weight of your glory fall Let the weight of your glory presence as a gift and you will be a living carrier of his divine presence every time you step into a place there is something about your life demons will attest to the fact that you are a true ambassador unbelievers even if they don't get born again whenever you step into a place you dilute that atmosphere and they change their confessions to accommodate your presence in that environment that when they are trying to bribe the moment you step in if it's for three hours you make every unbeliever uncomfortable in that place until you step out at that point men can truly see Jesus in your life and it won't be too long one day they'll say what is it about your life I know it's not about your words I, I see that you represent love come you love so much i thought you just used to fake it on stage but now i truly see that the love is in you how come you give so much i thought you're just trying to look for a name but i found out that is truly your nature how come you're so patient in a wicked world of impatience how come you're so tolerant these are the qualities that will make you anything in this life they have an attracting power they will compel anything to you a combination who will not want to be with a man who or a woman who loves who is patient who is tolerant we're discussing one day with Ejimi and he said something he said when competence meets humility is fearful when a man who is competent and then he decides to be humble it's very painful it will inconvenience everybody and it will set a compulsory standard because when you see people who are better than you and you see them walking in humility are you seeing why ministers are supposed to really be an example 
because when people look at your life they cannot deny the grace and the workings of the spirit then they see the humility of the spirit they see the love of the spirit they are compelled to follow you as you follow Christ Paul said follow me even as I follow Christ hallelujah and tonight we are going to cry tonight is that night when we are going to forgive all the people we have been holding for ages hello father mother sister brother till i die no you you will not die but today you will let go are you following me now today is that day when you will cry and say lord this bitterness ends i can't be looking at my brother i'm anointed tonight is the night we are going to raise a cry and let me tell you something make this a real cry that's why we came tonight this is part of koinonia tonight we are going to be reaching certain conclusions and say lord forever my life will represent love forever my life when we have this we will stop having broken homes are you listening to me we will stop having all kinds of challenges in our companies in our ministries we need to be more like christ in the anointing and the manifestation of the spirit the same spirit that produces the outworkings of grace and power is the same spirit that brings in character rise up on your feet bless God for tonight's teaching the making of leaders the making of champions may be a hard message but it's part of the requirements to be a true ambassador go ahead and raise a cry Shata kapari de kalabakoso tai le kapari ada basanda da bari ada rash for every one of us born of a woman in this place there is need to cry tonight beginning from myself there's something an attribute of the flesh that we need to lay aside and pick up something tonight is not the night to talk about anointing we are not talking about power we are all great men and women in this place unforgiveness bitterness all of these things that cripple the manifestations go ahead raise a cry raise a cry from your spirit we want to present a perfect portrait a perfect representation we want to be true ambassadors living epistles testimonies we want to let the world see jesus in reality lost corruption all kinds of the workings of the flesh go ahead and raise a cry don't let the devil deceive you and say this does not concern you every ambassador in this place should raise a cry for the sake of his majesty for the sake of his glory make sure you're praying you're talking to the lord and say lord i have healed the sick many have seen manifestations of the spirit i can't deny that i'm anointed i can't deny that i'm gifted i can't deny it but something about my life keeps betraying your kingdom and tonight is that night i lay it aside draw me close to you that's a song of surrender tonight never let me go say lord i lay it i lay it all down i lay it all down again to hear you say that i'm your friend let this be a true confession from your spirit you are my desire no one and nothing will do 
much he loves. It's time for us to be governed by his passion, not our desires. Hallelujah. Prayer point number one. We're going to raise a cry. For if you want, you can pick up your Bible and begin to pray all these attributes that do not represent the kingdom out of your life. Are you listening to me? Instrumentalists, play your best class, the symbol as we pray. Prayer point number one. We are going to pray and say, Lord, I lay aside lust. Enough is enough. I lay aside lust once and for all by the Spirit of God. As you make that confession, the ability of the Spirit is there to help you. I lay aside bitterness, pride and arrogance. I lay it aside. Don't let the devil condemn you. God will never condemn you. God will not condemn you. He's building you. Anytime you sense condemnation, cast it. It comes from Satan. Go ahead and cry. To be a real ambassador. Raise a cry. All over this building. Raise a cry in your spirit. Say, Lord, I repent.
25 verse 22 we are going to pray the fruit of the spirit one by one if you've not been praying now is the time to pray please everybody if you came here with a bible if you didn't come here with one share with your neighbor we are going to be praying Galatians chapter 5 we need our world to see Jesus in his entirety in our lives we are not indisciplined people we love the Lord and we respect his government we have a king and we have a kingdom we have values and we live by those values Galatians chapter 5 I'll read it once as soon as I read it worshipers go ahead and just worship and we'll pray it but the fruit of the spirit in other words the fruit that the Holy Ghost manifests through a recreated human spirit is love joy peace long suffering not short suffering patience it's called gentleness gentleness don't tell me I was born that way gentleness goodness faith meekness self-control self-control anything cannot be yes any road is not the road self-control are you ready to pray and say Lord as I step into new dimensions I want to see a rich manifestation of all of these things. Go ahead and begin to pray. My life manifests the love. Go ahead and pray. My life is a manifestation of the love of God. The love of God. The love of God. The peace of God reigns in my heart. The peace of God reigns in my heart. The peace of peace lives in me. The peace of peace lives in me. Oh, I'm patient. I'm patient. I cast out every impatience. I am patient. Make sure you are praying. Take this seriously. Don't look at your neighbor. Pray. I am gentle in the name of Jesus. I am gentle. The workings of gentleness is manifesting through my life. The goodness of the Lord is being manifested through my life. The goodness of God. Make sure you are praying. There's grace for you as you pray. I am faithful. I speak it into my life. I am faithful. In the name of Jesus. I am meek. Humble in mind. Humble in heart. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Every seed of pride in me. I cast it away. In the name of the Lord Jesus. to round up I'd like to invite as many of you who want to give your heart to the Lord you've not made a decision for the Lord it doesn't matter what you have done the Lord loves you 
hallelujah and for those of you who have at one time been really close to the lord and you love his ways but for some reason pressures distractions or for whatever reason you found yourself derailing obviously delaying please find your way to the front quickly quickly find your way to the front the lord is showing you mercy tonight don't think about it run leave your seat if you are still thinking about it go back to your seat for the way of the lord is the way of wisdom There is always a new beginning. The law condemns. Religious people condemn. And they make you feel bad. They make you feel sorrowful. They make it look like God is not love. But I want to tell you tonight that God is love. Everyone who will come to him, he will in no wise cast away. We are a great family. Let no devil make you think there is no way. Today marks a new beginning. I don't care what you have done no one condemns you the justifier of men is in the house tonight and with every sense of love with every sense of joy and welcome in our hearts we welcome you to a new beginning it doesn't matter how satan has taken advantage of your life there is love the bond of perfectness hallelujah I know some of you are standing here to make your decision for the Lord for the first time. Others, some of you are born again, you love God. You're just finding the struggles derailing from His path. I'd like you to pray after me and say, Father, I come before you in the name of Jesus. I realize that you alone can help me. Lord, I declare that I receive your help tonight. I receive your help. Bring my life back again. Give me a new beginning. I'm willing to start again. I'm willing to be serious with you. Every condemnation and every guilt as a result of my past is hereby washed in the blood and I declare that I'm not the same man who came I'm a new person with a new start a new beginning in the name of Jesus father I pray for these ones our brothers and sisters thank you because you have drawn them we love them thank you because they have not just come on their own they responded to your call Lord I pray that as many of them who have had challenges and bitter pasts let tonight be a fresh beginning therefore I prophesy to you remember not the, the former things nor consider the things of old Isaiah 43 from verse 18 behold the Lord does a new thing tonight behold the Lord does a new thing he will make ways in the wilderness for you streams in the desert a new beginning for you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ hallelujah now I'd like you to just um, you'll just take a walk the ushers will have a word with you they'll just have your details and a committee during the week will just meet with you and just follow you up hallelujah and we'll just talk with you and I truly believe that this decision you have made for the Lord will be the beginning of a great life. Everything you truly desire can be found in Him. Hallelujah. We appreciate you and we love you. 
God bless you. Before you go, I'd like a few of the ministers to come. They'll be giving you a hug and imparting the love of God, letting you know that we love you. As soon as they give you a wonderful hug, you can follow the ushers. Just a few, three or four of you. Just come hug them and let them know you love them. Go ahead. Give them a wonderful fellowship. Love. We love you in the name of Jesus. We receive you. The love of Christ is at work. Please, as soon, don't go back to your seat. Just follow the ushers this way. Appreciate them as they go. Motivate them. Let them know we love them. Go ahead. A warm hug and impartation of love. Go ahead and appreciate them until every one of them leaves. Hallelujah. A few quick announcements and we'll be out of here. Hallelujah. Please sit down for a while. God bless you. Just a few announcements and we'll be out of here. Um, to let you know that there are buses available. Now please understand that the buses are limited. Are you following me? The buses are limited. It may not be able to accommodate everyone. So as many of you who have the means to go back to your various destinations, please, you can go so that those who need to um, come into the bus and utilize the opportunity to get to school or wherever they are going, very, very important. And then um, to remind us, how many of you know that we are on with the bus project? Hallelujah. We are on with the bus project for your seed, your love gift. We don't compel people. We can encourage people. The Bible says, let every man give as he has purposed in his heart. And we have agreed as a house to make commitments from 5,000 naira and above. As many of you have it or who had it or brought it here, you can give the treasurer to sin, wave your hands, or any of the ministers or the heads of departments. Please and please let God bless you. Commit yourself even as you sow. Hallelujah. So diligently, even if you've given, give again. You'll be glad to know that your seed is being utilized hallelujah and then i want to apologize for many of you who paid for the koinonia shirts and have not received them we really really apologize hallelujah the shirts are still on you can pay with the treasurer Ejimi is around and he'll be Thank you for watching our entire video today. If you feel you can bless someone, please join us and spread the gospel by sharing this video on your social media.